Welcome to the NPM Workspaces tutorial for NX. My name is Isaac Mann, and in this tutorial, we're going to start with an NPM Workspaces repository, and then we'll add NX to it. I'll show you how to configure caching for your existing tasks, and then we'll set up a task pipeline so that dependent tasks will always be run before the task the way they're needed. I'll show you the benefits that you can gain from adding NX plugins to your repository to automatically configure your caching settings and to take advantage of some of the code generations that are possible. I'll also show you how to use the NX release command to help you with the NPM publishing process and then show you how to set up your CI to use NX Cloud and all the advantages that that can bring you. All right, let's get started. We'll start by cloning this Narwhal Tusky Design repository. Once we run this git clone command and then cd into the repository, you'll end up with a repo that looks like this. Let's run an npm install to get all the modules loaded in. And let's take a look at the projects that are available in this repository. We have one app here, this demo app, that uses two different packages. We have a buttons package and a forms package. These are all React projects, uh, but the underlying framework doesn't really matter for our purposes. If you look in the package.json here, we can see npm workspaces is set up to look at the projects that are underneath packages and underneath apps. Because of this, when we ran npm install, it also not only did it install node modules at the root, it also installed node modules specific to each project in that particular project's uh, folder. If we want to run a particular command for an individual project, we can run npm run lint w and then the project name at tusk design slash demo is the main application. So we're running lint for that project. This is all familiar if you've used npm workspaces before. If we want to run the build for this project, we'll just put build here instead of lint and it runs the build. Fortunately, we hit an error. The error it's getting is that the it's looking for the Tusk Design Buttons project, but that Buttons project has not been built ahead of time. So it's in this Buttons folder, it's looking for a dist folder in here, and that doesn't exist yet. So to resolve this, we can run build for everything in the repository with npm run build dash ws. That'll run build for everything, and now our application build uh, completes successfully. Now that we have a basic understanding of what's in this repository, let's see how NX can help us. So to add NX, we'll run npx nx at latest init. This will install NX and configure it for us. Um, the init script gives us the option to add some plugins that might be helpful to us. In our case, we'll start without the plugins and then add them later to see what the difference is. Now NX will ask us a series of questions about our existing setup to help configure things for us in the best possible way. So which scripts needs to be run in order? Uh, the build script needs to be run in order. That means that dependent projects need to be built before the main project is built. Uh, which scripts are cacheable, meaning this, given the same input, you'll always get the same output. Uh, dev is a long running task, so that won't work, but type check is, can be cached. Uh, build can be cached and lint can be cached. Uh, type check does not create any outputs. Uh, build does create outputs in the dist folder. Lint does not make any outputs. And now we're installing NX. This is asking us if we want to set up NX Cloud in this repository. We're going to skip that for now and we'll go come back to it at the end of the tutorial. Now let's take a look at NX's project graph of your repository. NX analyzes your workspace and creates this graph showing all the projects in your repository and how they depend on each other. We can see here that the demo application depends on the forms library and the, both the demo application and the forms library depend on the buttons library. It's important to know that this graph is dynamically generated based on the code in your repository. As your repository grows and shifts and changes, this graph will be updated based on the actual code that you have in place. NX can also run your tasks for you. So to run the build for your demo application, we'll run NX build tusk design demo. 
Or you can run all tasks with a certain name by running nx run many dash dash target and the name of the task. In this case, we'll use type check. Now during our init script, nx set up caching for these tasks. You can see that build is set to cache and type check and lint are also set to cache. And then build also has output set to the project root disk folder. That means every time you run the build, the disk folder is saved in a cache. The next time you run the build with the same source files, instead of actually running the build itself, it'll just copy that saved disk folder into the correct location. So if we run nx build for the demo app again, it'll complete instantly. You can see here that nx read the output from the cache instead of running the command. Now you may have noticed that this says three out of three tasks here that, that were cached when we only ran the build command for the application. Now the reason this happens is because NX has set up a task pipeline for us. NX knows because we told it during the initialization script that the application build depends on all the build tasks of the projects that it depends on. We can see that here with this depends on property. So this means that before we run the build for the application demo, we need to run the build for all the projects that it depends on. We can actually see this by looking in the NX graph and looking at the task graph instead of the project graph. We go to this drop down and change it to tasks and we'll look at the builds. You can see here that the demo build depends on the forms build task and then the buttons build task. This is especially useful because it means that we'll never run into that error that we saw at the beginning of the tutorial. If for some reason the disk folder in our buttons project has been deleted, we can still run the build command for our demo application and it will run the build for all the dependent projects. Not only did that complete instantly, but it also repopulated this disk folder that I just deleted. So that's one error that you never have to think about again when you're set up with the correct task pipelines with NX. All right, what if you wanna make your own task pipeline? You may have noticed in the demo application in their package JSON, we have a pre-build script here. So every time you run build for the demo, it should run the type check task first. So we can do the same thing with NX as well. We'll just delete this pre-build step and we'll go to our nx.json again. And in addition to running all the builds for the dependent projects, we'll add a type check task in here. So this means that anytime you run build for a project, it will also run a type check task if, it's, if it exists for that project. So now we'll run nx build for the demo app. And you see here it's running the type check for that demo. Now all of this functionality is available with the core of NX. We mentioned at the beginning that there are plugins also available for NX. So why would you want to add a plugin? You can think of plugins as a better integration point with a particular tool that you want to use in your repository. They can automatically configure caching for you for the inputs and outputs of a particular task. Uh, they can infer the tasks to, that can be run in your project for that particular tool. They can also provide code generators that help you scaffold out and use the tool in, in your project um, or automatically keep the tooling versions and configuration files up to date as you update to the latest version of that, of that tool. So let me show you how the automatic caching configuration can work. First, let's go into the NXJSON here. We'll delete this outputs property because we're going to allow the NXV plugin to infer this for us. Now let's install the nxvite plugin. We'll use the nxadd command because that will automatically match the version of nxvite with the version of nx that we have installed in this repository. Now by just installing that plugin, let's see what tasks it can infer for us for the demo project. We'll use this nx show project command. And we'll see in the project, there are these NPM scripts that were already defined 
for us. Plus, there are some inferred tasks from the Vite plugin. We've got serve, serve static, the Vite build command, and the Vite preview command, because we already have a build command and we have a preview command. When this plugin was added, NX noticed that the build command was the same thing as, as our default Vite build command. So it updated it to just call the Vite build command, which down here we can see has some outputs predefined and a basic task pipeline here. Now these outputs are not hard coded. This is actually reading from your Vite config file. So let's go change that. If we go to the Vite config file for the demo application, and we'll update the out directory for the build to go under the dist demo folder instead of the, the root dist folder. Now let's look and see what the outputs are set in our caching configuration. Now you can see that these outputs have been updated based on the configuration file um, for where the build will actually be, be sent. This makes it so that you change the value in one place, you have one source of truth, which is your tooling configuration file, and NX just figures out the best way to cache that task based on the way you already have it set up. You could also add the NX ES lint plugin and see how it infers the lint task for you. After all the changes we've done, the task graph for the demo build task will look like this. In order for the demo build to run, we need to do the type check task, and then we also need to build each of the dependent projects. And in order to build those dependent projects, we need to do the type check task on those projects. In a real repository, this graph can be much larger, but NX will automatically run them in the correct order and parallelize the task wherever possible. Let's take a look at another thing that NX can help you with. Let's say you want to release your projects on NPM. NX has a NX release command that you can configure in your nx.json file. We'll set the release property and tell nx about which projects might be released. We'll tell nx to look in the packages folder. Now we're ready to use the nx release command to help manage the npm release process for you. It can automatically bump your version numbers, it can create change logs for you, set up git tags, and then actually run the npm publish command. The first time you run this command, you'll want to add the dash dash first release flag. And you always want to start with a dry run flag to make sure that everything is the way you want it to be before you actually do it for real. So the release command has looked through a package JSON files and found that buttons has a current version of 1.2, and it wants to know what new version we should apply before we publish this to NPM. We'll say minor, and, and if we scroll up here, we can see all the files that it would have changed and the version numbers it would have changed them to. So if you were happy with these changes, you could run the command again without the dry run flag and actually publish something to NPM. We won't do this in the, in the video, but you can set that up yourself. Obviously, after your first release, you want to remove that first release flag and just do nx release dash dash dry run. And then when you're happy with it, remove that dry run flag. The last thing we'll set up is a CI workflow for your repository. nx not only helps you with your local development, it can also make your CI pipeline much, much faster. We'll use the nx generate command to generate a CI workflow. And we'll set the CI to be GitHub. Uh, the default name of CI is fine. And this has generated the CI.yaml file. Now this is just a basic workflow here that uses this NX affected command to run the lint test and build targets only for projects that were affected by a particular PR. This saves you lots of time in CI, especially in larger workspaces. If you were to make a change to just the demo application, there's no need to run the test and lint commands for the libraries that it depends on because those could not have, have been broken. So there's no point waiting for CI to run those things over and over again when nothing has changed there. NX Cloud also provides automatic parallelization with the NX Agents feature. Once you set up an account in NX Cloud, all you need to do is uncomment this line here and this will automatically take your tasks and run them 
on five separate machines, automatically distributing those tasks across the machines in the most efficient way possible. If you feel like your CI is taking too long, all you need to do is bump this number up to a higher number and you'll take advantage of more machines to get your task completed faster. If you feel like that's too many machines to parallelize across, you can drop it back down as you see fit. This is just a quick intro into what NX can do for you. To dig into more features of NX and NX Cloud, go to nx.dev and explore all the ways that NX can improve your developer experience.